Okay, if you have your Bible with me, turn with me, please, to uh, Psalm 95. And it's a call to worship and praise God and to walk in obedience. But it says in Psalm 95, verse 1, Oh, come and let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Is he the rock of your salvation this morning? That is pathetic. Is he the rock of your salvation? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And the whole of this morning, as I share with you, is all going to be about thanksgiving. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Wow, isn't that, aren't they awesome verses? Now turn over probably a page in your Bible, or two pages, and you'll come to Psalm 104. And Psalm 104 says that, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of the upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks in the wings of the wind, who makes his angels, spirits, his ministers a flame of fire, who lay the foundations of of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. Oh, we are serving an awesome living God this morning. And I just want to encourage you this morning as we look at this series we've been starting on, it's on maturity, the road to maturity. And you know, a sign of that maturity is that, well, the miraculous power of thanksgiving is a sign of maturity. Because we need to be able to thank God in every circumstance of life because thanksgiving is the fuel of faith. We need to see and understand that this miraculous power of thankfulness is a sign of you and I maturing in God. How thankful are you today? Oh, I tell you, I am so thankful for all that God has blessed me with. He's blessed me with the most awesome wife, and he has blessed me with children and grandchildren. He blesses me in my going out. He blesses me in my coming in. He adds his, he says my paths are strewn with his blessings. He knows He knows my going out. He knows my coming in. He is God Almighty, yet he knows Will Graham. He is God Almighty who knows Michael. He is God Almighty who knows joy. He knows every one of our needs and he cares for us. We ought to be coming today in this celebration of harvest, thanking him for the harvest of our lives in this past year and thanking him for his goodness. Let Let us move on from murmuring to thankfulness. You know, there's a disease in society. It's called murmuring. And everybody loves to have a moan. Everybody loves to have a murmur, so they do. Well, get rid of the moans, get rid of the murmuring, and replace it with thankfulness, because thankfulness will cause you to grow in the presence of Almighty God and will give you life, and life that surpasses understanding. With thankfulness keeps you focused on God, and God becomes your priority. What it, God needs to be your priority. Whatever job you're in, I think of Michael when I think of people working hard. And I just, he understand that. Michael took on a new job, and that guy has worked, excuse the term, night and day, worked his socks off. And when I look at him, I just say, Father, I thank you for the job you've given him, but I thank you, Lord God, it will get better in Jesus' name. Amen? But you have to... in. The hard times, you still have to thank God for what he's given, believing that he will improve it and give better in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you this morning as my brothers and sisters to realize that thankfulness acknowledges that God is our provider. Woo-hoo! God is our provider. You know, the, the word of God says to me, I lack no good thing. He says unto me that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And your father God is rich. Oh, brothers and sisters, believe it. I'm going to show you some slides in a minute and you'll just see how rich you are. You are rich 
beyond measure in the lives of people that are around you. But thankfulness acknowledges that God is our provider. I am thankful that I woke up this morning and I was alive. Woo-hoo, hallelujah, another day to live for God. I was thankful this morning that I had a car to drive to the radio station in. I was thankful this morning that at least one person was listening to me on the radio. Hallelujah. I was thankful this morning that I was able to talk about Jesus on the airwaves all over this area and around the world. I have cultivated, as your pastor, a spirit of thankfulness. I have chosen to cultivate thankfulness in my heart because thankfulness keeps me focused on God. My circumstances do not dictate my life, but that my thankfulness unto God for his bountiful provision is what keeps me going year upon year upon year. Thankfulness prevents a complaining spirit. If you're a complainer and a moaner and a murmurer, get rid of it and replace it with thankfulness. That's that's good teaching. Because, brothers and sisters, as you murmur, as you moan, as you groan, you open the door for the enemy to come in and to steal that which God gave you because he comes to kill, to steal, and destroy the blessings that God has sown into your life. God did not give you problems. God did not give you sickness, and God does not give you poverty. He is a good God. And if we keep our minds focused upon him and have a thankful heart, heart, that thankfulness will prevent us having a complaining spirit. Oh, get rid of complaining. It's not worth it. It just gives you a headache. You know, I'd much rather have somebody come to me and say, well, I'm having a really bad day, but I thank God that he's walking through the day with me. Wow, I can really say amen to that. But when somebody comes and all they want to do is moan and moan and moan and moan and murmur at me, I want to smack them and say, grow up and give thanks for what you have. Hallelujah. Thankfulness acknowledges that God is our provider. Thankfulness prevents a complaining spirit. And thankfulness creates a positive outlook for life. You want to be positive in life? Give thanks. Oh, amen. Yes, Mick, I'm with you. I go and have coffee with Mick on a Thursday morning. You know, we were sitting out sunbathing on Thursday morning. I may have three coats on, but we were sunbathing anyhow, you know. And uh, we've got cups of coffee there. And, you know, he is one of the most thankful men I've come across in a long time. Sits in his wheelchair, and he and I together were thanking God for all the good things that he has given to us in Jesus' name. That spirit of thankfulness creates in us a positive outlook in life. Mick may be in a chair, but his spirit is free. His spirit is soaring, and he lives in the presence of God. It's just his body that's in that chair. Whoa, nearly off there. Missed the edge. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a little short guy. Hallelujah. Thankfulness creates a positive attitude in life. We need to be thankful people. I want to encourage you this morning, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is a good God. The miraculous power of thankfulness truly is a sign of maturity and it is the fuel of faith. Thankfulness invites joy to dwell in our hearts. You know, when you get amongst a lot of people who don't have a lot of joy, they soon recognize your joy. I look at Lizzie, uh, Lizzie Burton, and I just see thankfulness and I just see joy and I see rivers of life because that's what she is. It just is that. Hallelujah, blooming hallelujah, that's what she is, hallelujah. I know Steve, you said she was, no, you didn't say she was a pain, sorry, I picked that, that wrong. No, you said she was a blessing, didn't you, Steve? Oh, no, you had a heart attack there, I know. Uh, but, you know, it was, I've spent time with Steve and all that came out of his mouth and the time I was with him was not a word of anger or criticism or murmuring, it was just thankfulness for all that God had blessed him with. And I want to encourage you this morning, my brothers and sisters, have a thankful spirit because it will cause faith to rise in your heart. If I could put this roll of lights out. Can I have the first slide up on on the slides? This is the Sulawesi Victory Church in Zambia. That building on the left, one more row, yeah, that'd be great. The building on the left-hand side of the picture is the Victory Church. Awesome. Awesome. Now, you might think, well, that doesn't look very much. For those people, that is one amazing building to have because it's their building. May not, and you know, up until a few weeks ago, it had no water. It had no electricity. 
It didn't even have chairs or benches to sit on. They just gathered and they danced before the Lord with all their heart. And this is so lazy, a, a, brother, a church that some of our brothers and sisters worship in and have been worshiping in this morning. And they come before God. There's no windows in it. But in the last few weeks, they had saved enough money that, that one of the men knew how to do some electrics. You know how he discovered how to do electrics? He went to the library and got a book. No health and safety there. Just put a few wires together. We've seen them do that. Hallelujah. And they've now got electricity. You can see the wire running down into the building. They were rejoicing the fact that they had got electricity. The next slide, please. And here is the new church building. It needs a bit of work doing on it. You can see that uh, the roof is not quite completed where Alex is, uh, that's Alec Coatsy from Leeds. He's standing under there doing a teaching to a bunch of leaders. The building opposite them was a church they started last year and they built out of mud bricks. But last year they didn't have enough money for the beams to put the roof on and when the rainy season came, all the mud bricks got soggy and they just melted away. And there was the church just basically disappeared. Well, here in Solwazi, uh, there, there's a people full of the passion of God. They get up week by week thanking God for everything they have. They're thanking God for a building with no chairs. They're thanking God for a building with no windows. They're rejoicing in God with a building that's just got electricity. They're giving thanks because they've now got water in the school. Can I have the next slide, please? And here is the Solwazi school. And this is a small number of the children who come. They have over 300 children come four days a week to come to school. And these children come and they get a very basic education. And when uh, Vicky and Alec Coatsy got there, just a few, next slide, a few days ago, they discovered that they, even the blackboards were broken. And they went out and they bought new blackboards. They bought chalks. They bought back blackboard paint and painted the blackboards, got books for the children, bought a load of sweets for the children. And for some of these children, they were the first fizzy drinks and sweets they'd had in months. Hallelujah. And you're giving month upon month has helped bless those children because we sent Alex Coatsy out there to minister on behalf of Victory Churches UK. And we gave him a bunch of money to take with him that he might bless those children. But one of the things they haven't got out there is very little in the way of food. Very little food. And we look at this awesome picture here to my right and to your left, and we see boats loaded with fruit we, and with vegetables. That just reminds me of Cambodia and Thailand. We look at the little uh, trolley here. It's like a fruits vendor stall that uh, Pete and uh, Michael made for us, and it's laden with grapes, and, and it's laden with fruits of all kinds. We look at the, what, we, what we call our communion table, and there's grapes upon it. There's the bread of life on it, the Word of God on it. Oh, church, can you say thank you, Jesus? this morning because we are blessed who we are so anyhow it was a few weeks ago as you know I came and said let's buy a cow and send it to Africa Mark on the front row cheeky as he is thought I was going to take it on a 747 from London or that you know he said he, he could just see me leading this cow through Heathrow airport you know but we can't take a cow to Sulwazy because they haven't got enough grass to feed a cow on but what they have asked for is a daddy goat and three mommy goats. And with a daddy goat and mommy goats, they will eventually get baby goats. Wow, birds and bees lesson this morning, hallelujah. And uh, you know, we're, not only are we going to buy them goats, but we're going to buy, well, they call them broilers, they're little tiny chicks and they feed them up, they sell them in the market. But we're also going to buy them hens that actually lay eggs, they're bigger hens, and they're going to start a business. I don't want to give somebody a meal and leave them alone. My heart is that this harvest time, we will give people something which they will have for the months and the years ahead in Jesus' name. Yes, we're going to buy them a billy goat and nanny goats. Hallelujah. So Michael didn't have time to change the painting. He was having trouble getting rid of that udder underneath for the goat. But anyhow, hallelujah. Uh, we're believing that uh, we're, we're going to have, they're going to buy goats. The goats work out about 40 to 60 pounds each, depending on whether it's a billy goat or a nanny goat. A nanny goat's worth a lot more money, but most women are. Hallelujah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, we want to sow into the lives of these, you from Rugeley, are going to send money to Sulwazy next week. We're going to, and there's, uh, can I the next slide? Should we have a young man? Ah, here he is. His name is Given. Yes. And what a name to have, Given. 
But he's given himself unto God. And he works for nothing, teaching year seven and year nine school, Monday through Friday. And he is the young man who's going to go and buy our goats and buy our chickens for us. He is the young man that they can trust. Victory Churches International sent nearly £10,000 last year to a group of pastors in Zambia. That's sad to say, nothing corrupts like money. And sadly, the pastors ran off with the money. Money that was meant for the school, money that was meant for the church, money that was meant to build a building. But nothing corrupts like money. So we have found... And we've now got bank accounts with double signatures. We've now got this young man who's going to administrate for us. And he's going to look after all these goats that are going to be born over the next year. And they're going to send us photographs. And they're going to sell the baby goats. And if every 40 or 60 pounds that they get, they're going to divide that between the church and between the school. And you know, 40 to 60 pounds is a big amount of money in that country. So it is. Amen? Next slide. This is another one of the teachers. Just go through the next few. This is another brother. He's a teacher. And this is another teacher. And the next one is this. I love her name, Joy Lynn. Joy Lynn. She is a joyful lady. She is, you can just look at that girl, and you can just see the joy of the Lord. And apparently, she is amazing with the children. She really helps them. She is full of the life and joy of the Lord. She teaches them songs. They don't have any musical instruments. They just sing. But have you ever heard a bunch of Africans sing? They are awesome. When they get into a cappello, they are phenomenal. So they are. And all these children are looking forward. They're going to build a pen for the goats. They're going to build a chicken coop for their chickens. And I think that is wonderful. And this year, our Harvest Thanksgiving offering is going to go to help the people in Sulwazi. Help the children have a great life. I personally think it's a great thing to do. I think it's awesome when I praise God for what I've got. If you can go back to slide one for me, if that's possible. There we are. When I look, if you look at that slide, if you can get right up close to it, you will see that these people have very, very little in life. Very little indeed. And the church here in Sulwazi, this is on the outskirts of the city. You can see uh, there's trees there in the background of it. And that's why they're going to start their little business there. But I believe that their business will prosper and grow. Now, Dot has got, with Dot and Barb and I, we've got a friend called Narin. And he's up in, Thai, in yes, Thailand. And he started a, a fish breeding th program. In his, and dug a big pit, lined it with a liner, and bought probably a couple of hundred tiny little things. I'd call them like sticklebacks. But I watched a video clip the other day. You see, there's no point just giving a man money, but you give a man money to buy something he can use and he can grow it and he can sell it and it gives him more. Well, they lifted up this net out of the pond and it was full of koi carp. They, I mean, I'm talking eight to tw nine to 12 inches they got to be long. And they can sell those out there in uh, Thailand. He planted banana trees all down the sides of his field. And they went out, the kids go out and get bananas, but they're not a bunch of bananas like you buy. They're a bunch of bananas, weighs about 20 kilos and on a big stalk, and they carry it on their shoulder. It's awesome to be part of a family that wants to help people grow. Dots through her work out there in, in Thailand helps Narin and that work to grow. She also works with a group up right up on the Bur Burma border and uh, the Myanmar, as it's now called. And right on the border where the boy soldiers were, they have planted, they are now exporting the fruit trees, fr the fruit from the fruit trees they planted. Woohoo! They went into rabbit breeding and they bred like rabbits and they sold them. Hallelujah! And they got a bunch of money for them. They're now, they've got ponds and they're growing their own fish. Teach a man to fish and he will be able to supply. And these men and women have got a vision from God to get, and they are so thankful. You've never seen the thankfulness in the hearts of these people and on their faces when you go to them and you give them. You know, I'm looking forward to the pictures that come back of the goats being presented to the church and the children. Man, that will thrill those kids. And in a year's time when they have little baby goats, hallelujah, it's going to be wonderful. And next year at Harvest Thanksgiving, we will give thanks unto God for the harvest that he has provided in Sulwazi, in Africa, in Zambia. Brothers and sisters, I want you this year to have a 
thankful spirit. I want you to be men and women who rejoice in the goodness of God and you thank him for all that you have. That's why when we sit down and we say grace, it's thanking God for his bountiful provision. A lot of families don't say grace today, but I believe it's important to say grace. It's important to give thanks unto God for all his wonderful provision. Every time I push the starter button in my car and I go, Whoa, it's awesome. I really thank God. I thank God for you and the fruit of your labors. I thank God that you're able to go out and share the gospel. That Rita and some of them were out yesterday and Chrissy and Jan were out giving out invitations to the movie night and stuff. Come to the movie night. Bring somebody with you. We have plenty of popcorn. I know the seats will be hard. I've heard somebody saying they found the seats hard this week. So do I. Hallelujah. Bring us cushion. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And just come and enjoy. But come with a spirit of thankfulness because the miraculous power of thankfulness Thankfulness is a sure sign of a maturity and it is the fuel to your faith. It's going to cause you to grow in the things of God in Jesus' name. Wow. Look at that picture. Boats laden with the fruit and the goodness of God. You know, Barb and I some years ago we had a young man from Russia with he met us, we met him in America. And we walked into a Morrison's equivalent in the United States. And he stood and he wept and wept and wept because he'd never seen so much food in one place at one time. There was at least eight or nine different apples, all the bananas. And then he went around and looked at the clothes and he couldn't believe it. And our friend Dave Dwell, who's gone to America, uh, this young man, I can't remember his name, but he was standing outside the shop window and he was looking at a leather jacket. Pasha, that was his name. And he stood, you know, bit your eyes open up when you see something, which is, wow. And Dave says to him, what do you like think of that jacket? And he says, wow, Pastor Dave, it's amazing. He says, but look at the price. And Dave, said, Dave says, come with me. And he walked out with a leather jacket on that he'd been admiring just a few moments ago because his heavenly father was rejoicing and being able to bless him. Dave got great joy out of blessing him as well. Do you know something? It's wonderful to bless somebody. I encourage you, bless somebody with a smile. Bless somebody with a word of encouragement. Bless somebody with thankfulness in your heart this morning. And give as if it was somebody else's wallet. <laughs> and enjoy giving. Whatever you've got to give, enjoy giving it. Doesn't matter how small, doesn't matter how big. Enjoy giving. In Jesus' name. Amen? So, Thankfulness acknowledges God is our provider. Thankfulness prevents a complaining spirit. Thankfulness creates a positive outlook in life. And thankfulness invites joy to dwell in our hearts. I love being happy. I love being joyful. I love being thankful. I would much rather be joyful than miserable. A happy person draws people around them. A miserable person sends people away. I praise God that while I sit down in the radio station and they tease me about my ever ready batteries and they tease me about always being happy. Isn't that better than somebody saying you're a miserable blank, 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 blank? <laughs> it is. It truly is. And I acknowledge Jesus as the source of all my joy. I've got a lot of maturing yet to do, but watch my thankfulness grow because I am thankful for all that he has blessed me with in Jesus' name. Last week, we, as you know, we were in Poland with the Victory Church in Helena Gora. And we met uh, David Pedlow and his wife Vera were there with us. And we hadn't seen a lady called Cindy who first started the church with Magda. Two ladies started a church in Poland over 20 years ago, and that was very, very rare. And the churches all around came against them. But last Sunday morning, person after person got up in the service and was thanking God for the two ladies who were, had the faith to start a church. They started a work that no man could stop. Cindy had left Elena Gora 10 years ago. She's living in Canada, but she turned up for the, t the celebration last week. What a joy it was to sit and talk with her, to give thanks unto God for all that we're blessed with. Thank God for your worst enemy. It could be worse. Bless him. Hallelujah. 
Seriously. Pray for them. them. Absolutely, Lizzie. Yeah. We are called to be a thankful people. You ready to bless so weighty this morning? Yes, two of us are. Hallelujah. Father, for the victory work in Sulawesi. Thank you, Lord.